my name is Fedro and this is Cozy Fedgy and on this channel we cover a variety of things such as Let's Plays, JRPGs, and all things cozy gaming. Today I wanted to discuss a topic that I think it's very important to discuss and talk about. Many gamers will deal with this situation or issue at some point or another and that is dealing with your gaming backlog. Now, I know dealing with your gaming backlog can be a very tedious, time consuming, and the bane to our existence while some others could find it as a very therapeutic and relaxing thing to do. I wish I could be like you. I would love that for you if you are one of those people, but for me, dealing with my backlog can be a very scary thing and intimidating thing to do. So I wanted to put my little two cents and give share with my tips on how I'm currently dealing with my backlog. I know a lot of people have their own ideas and tips and tricks and how they tackle their backlog, so I wanted to share mine. So without further ado, let's get on to our tips on how to deal with your current your firm gaming backlog. So tip number one, assess and look at your games. I know this seems pretty obvious, but sometimes the obvious isn't the obvious, but take the time to really look at what, the ga what games that you have and what you own. And that means looking at all the physical games that you have, as well as the digital ones. For me, I have a rolling card that is just full of games from all different types of devices that I own. I know that I have a lot of games on my Steam library or just digital games on different consoles. And just taking the time to just look at what I have is A, going to give you a better idea of what you're working with. You may look at your gaming library and be like, wait a minute, I've already like gone through a lot of these games, I've already completed some of them. Or maybe, wow, I have a lot more that I haven't played yet. So just by taking the time to really look at what you have is just a great start to any backlog Thing that you're dealing with so definitely take the time to look at your physical and digital games tip number two make a list of all the games that you own this probably is probably one of the more tedious aspects of the backlog is just writing down or making a google spreadsheet or an excel sheet of all the games that you have you don't have to go to that extent you can simply just like take it a paper and just write down every single game that you have um and just look and then Go from there i think again also by making that list of all the games will allow you to again know what what, what you're working with and that way you can better get a better idea of what games are what you want to play which leads to my next tip is make a current backlog or list of games that you want to play right now for me i make a list of about 10 games that i know that i really want to play right away Having that list of either five or up to 10 will also make it less overwhelming and less intimidating just to have that short list of your overall, your overarching, your overall list of games. By having that 10, it just shortlists all the, um, your backlog and that way you can streamline and really focus on those current five to 10 games that you have. And once you cross them off, you just keep going and crossing and then before you know it, you've already completed that five list of five or list of ten games that you had on your list and then you can make a new one. By doing that you just make it like a little easier for yourself and you're taking away chunks at a time and then before you know it you've already tackled like a, like a quarter or half or maybe you've already finished your backlog and there you go. So I think that's definitely really important to do that as well. Um, tip number uh, four. <laughs> I can go. Tip number four. Rotate your genres. I think this is such such an easy tip to incorporate into your and dealing through gaming backlog is to rotate your genres. Have a variety. As someone who loves JRPGs and sometimes can get caught in the habit of playing JRPG after JRPG after JRPG, it can honestly lead to burnout. It can lead to gaming slumps, and those are never fun. Going through periods of time of not playing games, which is one of my favorite hobbies to do, and of course I set myself up that way. So by mixing up the genres, it keeps things fresh and keeps things rejuvenated and exciting. You know, if we play like let's say a JRPG to a visual novel to a farming sim to a platformer, rotating through those through, through those genres allows you to keep things fresh. I think it's really important. Which goes along to our next tip, which is to rotate your consoles. Similar to the last tip, by rotating your consoles, you can keep things fresh and rejuvenated and give you new experiences by playing different consoles. Like many people, including myself, I have a variety of consoles from my PS5 to my Switch to my gaming handhelds. By rotating them, I'm also experiencing 
different titles that you can play in other um, other consoles as well as different gaming mechanics and combats and features that only that console or handheld can offer that others couldn't. So again, it's a great way to keep things fresh. So next tip is to set aside time to play games. Now out of all the uh, tips on this, this um, list, I think this one's probably the hardest because I know we all have very busy hectic lives that we're living but by setting aside time to play video games allows us again to tackle our backlog like i mentioned before i know it's difficult to set aside time whether you are a full-time student or a full-time job or other obligations in your life whether you set aside 30 minutes or half an hour 30 minutes or half an hour those are the same things <laughs> if you set aside 30 minutes or an hour to two hours maybe if you're going crazy and set aside five hours i don't know just set aside that time, whether you um, or put down the kids to sleep and now you have that time before you go to bed, or maybe on the weekends you're free and have all the time in the world to play it to your heart's content, do that. I feel like allowing yourself, I'm sitting keep, or dedicating this time to play video games may seem like a chore to some, but it's also just, again, it's your hobby. It's something that you enjoy. By setting aside that time, you're allowing yourself to unwind, immerse yourself in this fun new game or world, and at the end of the day, you will be happy. So by setting aside that time, it's also a gift for you as well. So the next tip, which is gonna be a hard one, is try to limit the games that you're buying. I know, I know, it's very hard. I even find myself, find myself, it's a very hard thing to do. I always say playing video games and buying video games are completely two different hobbies. They're completely different things. Both give you different types of dopamine hits and whatnot. Um, but I think it's really important to limit what you're buying. Because again, by buying more games, you're just making your backlog even longer um, and bigger. But um, I know there's a few exceptions to that by like, you know, with recent news, we've had the 3DS eShop is closing soon as well as so the Wii U eShop. Um, e so people are trying to buy games before you can buy them on digital storefronts and then the physical versions of those are going to skyrocket like crazy or of course i know that there's plenty of new releases coming out as well as the plenty and many sales that do come out throughout the year it's very tempting to buy new games like i literally just bought a chunk of games from the 3ds eShop as well as just games that are on sale so this is definitely a tip that i need to learn as well so you're not the only ones as and guys but it's just important that way because when you Limit your um your buying your expenditures on games. It also like allows you to just be more, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I guess proactive. Is it proactive? I don't know. That's not the word. But it allows you to be more um just strategic with what you're playing. I think that's the word I'm looking for. I hope it is. Um, <laughs> but um, I think that when you are trying to or you're wanting to buy more games. I think this is a perfect question to have in mind is are you gonna play this game right away if you're gonna play this game in the next couple months if you're not if you're saying no to both of those questions maybe you shouldn't buy the game right now maybe it is a game that you do want to play at some point but that some point will happen and that game will still be there hopefully i know there's a few exceptions to like limited printed games or something like that but if you know that you're not going to play the game right away probably you would wait on it and pick it up at another time when you are ready to play that game so our next tip which is also another tip that i also need to learn too it's okay to drop a game i don't know what it is with me but i have this weird fixation when it comes to games that i have to finish them even if i'm having a miserable time i just want to finish it because like oh i spent my money on it like but I'm also spending my time on a game that I don't like. So if I'm not enjoying it, or if I'm not vibing to it, or if I didn't live up to expectations like I thought it would, it's okay to drop the game and just move on to another game that I would want to play on my backlog. Also, if you're not vibing with the game right now, put it on pause. Set it aside, set it aside and give some distance between it. Let it marinate. Maybe you're not like feeling it right now, but maybe in a couple of months later down the line, you're like, mm, am I in the mood to pick it up and then pick it up again? Maybe you enjoy it again. A great example for me is when I picked up Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. I have dropped that game a total of two times for a variety of reasons. One, I wasn't vibing with it when I first played it. Shocker, I know. And second of all, 
other games that I wanted to play came up, so I focused on those games. It wasn't until the third time that I picked it up where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna give this game a third, like another shot. And I'm so glad I did because it's now one of my favorite games on the Switch, one of my favorite games of all time, and honestly one of my favorite series of all time. So again, it's okay to drop a game, either you were just weren't enjoying it, and it's okay to like, let it go. Or for instance, it's like with you know, my Chronicles Definitive Edition. I may pick it up again and I actually really, really enjoy it. So that's definitely something to look out for. The next tip is try to limit one game at a time. I also a very difficult one to do, as some, especially as someone who is a mood gamer. I used to like play one game at a time, but then I realized my backlog is just really long. The majority of the games on my backlog are JRPGs and it's gonna take me a while to get through them. So I ended up playing multiple games at the same time. And that kind of led to a few issues. One, I ended up focusing way too much time on one specific game than the other. And then which would lead to me forgetting the game controls or mechanics of the, um, the game, of the other game, or I forgot completely where I left off. So then I had to start all over again. So by limiting your game to just playing to one game at a time, it allows you to leave focus and hone in on what's in, immerse yourself into that one game in one world. If you do want to play multiple games, I highly recommend switching up the genres that you're playing at the same time because I've had moments where I kind of mixed up controls, kind of <laughs> mixed up controls from other games as well as, again, I kind of forget what's happening in another game. So teach their own. This is definitely one that's like teach their own because some people can play multiple up to like three to five games at a time and still make it work. That's just, just not for me. And I'm very envious of those who can do that. And our last tip of this video is just to have fun. I understand that, again, the backlog or in our gaming backlog can be very tedious and time consuming and a very intimidating thing. Um, but don't beat yourself up if you tend to buy, if you bought a new game or two or you decided you wanted to play something that's not on your list or you picked up a new game and you're playing that one right away. At the end of the get the end of the gay. <laughs> At the end of the day, it is just um, a hobby that you enjoy and you shouldn't be too upset with yourself that you didn't do X, Y, and Z or didn't take away or play this game on your list. It's just a fun thing. And if you did end up, you know, finishing those, a game on your list, maybe you can reward yourself by buying a new game or trying something else that's not on your list. So again, just have fun with it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope that this video was somewhat helpful. I know that I will be definitely taking these um, these tips and taking, um, to heart because I definitely need to niche this um, issue in the bud before it becomes even more crazy and hectic. But um, yeah, again, if you guys enjoyed this video, do not forget to like and share and also comment down below what is a tip that you do to help deal with your backlog. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and have a good one. Bye.